T3, 5.1. Nathan opened his eyes when he heard the long, low train whistle. He felt the train rattle down the tracks. His cozy bed in Nebraska was far behind him now. He was on a long journey to Oregon. It was getting late, but Nathan wasn't tired. He wanted to explore. His mother was already asleep, so he quietly got out of bed and slid open the door to their room. At the next car, a girl played with her doll on a wooden seat. A kitten drank milk from a saucer. A man in another row ate cold beans out of a tin pan. Then Nathan stopped beside a boy his age. My name's Nathan, he said. What's your name? Ben, the boy said. My mother and I are meeting my father in Oregon, Nathan said. He's part of a farming settlement there. He grows wheat. My dad's a farmer in Oregon, too, said Ben. He raises dairy cows. Maybe the farms are near each other, Nathan said. I don't know, Ben replied. Oregon is a big place. I'm getting out at the next stop, Nathan said. Do you want to go with me? Sure, Ben said. He turned to his mother and asked, May I get out at the train station? Yes, but listen for the train whistle, she said. That means the train is about to leave. At the train station, the boys ate fried potatoes, boiled corn, and buffalo steak. Then they walked to a large field. They saw prairie dogs poking their heads out of the ground. The boys chased the prairie dogs. As soon as they tried to grab one, it disappeared. Nathan and Ben ran farther and farther from the station. They were having so much fun that they didn't hear the first train whistle. When it blew a second time, Nathan heard it. Oh no, Nathan cried. The boys raced across the field toward the train station, but they were too late. Soon all they could see was a billow of smoke from the train steam engine. Now what do we do? Nathan asked. Maybe someone in the ticket office can help, Ben said. The boys told the ticket agent what happened. The man pointed to a machine. This telegraph will help you, he said, and it will make your mothers less worried. He tapped out a series of long and short clicks on the telegraph. The telegraph is sending a message to the next station, he said. The ticket agent there will read it and make sure your train waits for you. My sister can take you there. She's a fast writer. The ticket agent met his sister outside. I'm Miss Sheila, she said to the boys. Let's get a move on. We have a train to catch. The group rode by the tracks toward the next station. After an hour, rain began falling. Water was seeping down the neck of Nathan's shirt. Ben showed Nathan two peppermint sticks. When we get to the station, we can have these, he said. Thanks, Nathan said. Ben's kindness made him feel less weary and less scared. Sheila and the boys kept riding. They came to a tall, narrow bridge that crossed a river. We can't cross the bridge, Sheila said. There's no room for us if another train comes. They rode down a hill to the river. Hold on tight, Sheila said. She got off the horse and led it through the water. The horse was scared, but Sheila pulled it forward. The boys clung to the horse. Nathan hoped they wouldn't slip. Finally, they made it across. Sheila got back on the horse. Her dress was covered with mud. What happened to your boot? Ben asked. I must have lost it in the water, Sheila said. We're almost there, though. She pointed to a light in the distance. It looks like someone's holding a lantern. At the next station, the riders greeted the ticket agent, the conductor, and the boys' mothers. Thank goodness you're safe, Nathan's mother said. Thanks for your help, Ben's mother said to Sheila. All in a day's work, Sheila said. Now you have an adventure to tell your fathers, Nathan's mother said to the boys. But no more adventures today or tomorrow, Ben's mother said. Don't worry, Nathan said. I think we've had enough adventure for a year. The whistle blew and the conductor led the travelers on board. The boys ran to the caboose at the end of the train. They waved at Sheila and shouted, Goodbye! The whistle blew again. The train was moving, Oregon bound.